Please help me to understand you Lord, you know I mean no one but you When you know that we abide Trials come on every side, oh Lord please help Welcome back. My name is Pastor Justin Morris with the Pentecostal Evangelical Church. And if this is the first time you're tuning in, welcome. Um, so the song that you heard was from Johnny Curtis. He's a Native American gospel singer that I had discovered back in 1987. And I'm not going to get fully into how I know who he is, but <clears throat> I'm going to say that uh, that song that you heard was from his Native American country gospel album. And um, he is really uh, <clears throat> a mighty man of God. And uh, he just passed away back in December, and I just found out about that. I, I, I hadn't connected with him ever, but I just reconnected with his music and found out uh, that uh, he had so much more than what I had known about. And so um, he's, he's with the Lord now, and I would just encourage you to go on iTunes and, and search his music. And he's got some really good music. I mean, in fact, it's he really ushered in Native American mus uh, gospel music. Uh, he started you know, back in the early 60s, or late 60s, excuse me, and uh, early 70s, and uh, just an amazing man, and watches YouTube videos, is preaching, he's known all over the world, and, uh, you know, he uh, he had thousands of people at his funeral, and so you know that he was well-loved, okay? Um, so before we get into the the, the character of Jonah, I've got um, my, my prayer request sheet, okay? We haven't done this in a few days because of, of resurrection, you know, the weekend that we were doing. And so um, on Thursday the 9th, there was uh, 14,808 deaths up to that point. And just four days later, we're looking at 22,154 deaths. So in just four days over the resurrection weekend, over 7,000 people um, have passed away from this. And um, one, one of the saddest stories I heard was a mother had lost her husband and then three days later lost her 20-year-old son to this. And uh, I saw the picture of it, and uh, she's, she's there with her husband and son, and they're both in the caskets. And um, just, uh, just horrible, just horrific. And, you know, God is sending a message to the United States and to the world. And uh, I really believe this. He, he's allowing this to happen. And so um, what the message is, I believe it is to come back to him. But um, so the thing is, I'm praying that the will of God uh, gets done pretty darn quickly because we're losing you know thousands and thousands of people. And so uh, I just want you to also pray for our president because he's being attacked on all sides from this, and and um, you know it's not his fault this happened. And so people say, well, he could have acted a lot quicker. Well, he acted as fast as he could. In fact, he uh, he stopped China flights from China coming in before it really got serious, and he was criticized for that. And if he hadn't, then many more people would have died. So um, you know the thing is, is uh, we do the best we can, and uh, we got all these medical professionals out there trying to find a cure for this thing, and so. Uh, I just don't think it's going to be over as quick as most people would like it to be. And it's kind of sad because, you know, I've also got a prayer on here for my job. I need a job. You know, I stopped getting paid by the military on June 1st in, in a full-time paycheck status. And I go to my retirement paycheck and that may not kick in until July and or maybe even August. And we do have some savings uh, built up to get us that far. Um, but I, I need to get a job like four, four million other people. So <clears throat> let's just pray our, uh, our economy can get back on track here. Okay. We really need that. And, and I just want to plead the blood of Jesus Christ over president Trump and his task force and anybody that is, is truly on his side to get this thing done and a hedge of thorns to protect them in the name of Jesus right now. I pray. Um, okay. So let's just jump into Jonah. If you've got your book called the 100, um, you can go on Amazon if you don't. It's for $13.99. Just look it up, The 100 by Justin Morris. And um, follow along. I think we're on page 35 now. Uh, let's just kind of look. Yep, 
Page 35, you see a little uh, picture with a, a fish and a guy inside of it praying. <laughs> uh, that was the publishers that did that, not me. It was my idea. Um, but uh, Jonah, okay, the name Jonah comes from the Hebrew name of Yonah. And it, it means dove. And I'm the only thing I can think of it is, uh, I mean, he took flight. He took off, okay? But uh, um, according to most scholars, Jonah was born in 800 B.C. and died in 740 B.C. So he only lived about 60 years. Um, and, and so, in fact, in, uh, in 2 Kings chapter 14, verse 25, it says that Jonah was born in gath Hafer. Israel. And so if you look at the map here, it'll show that that's a little bit west of the Sea of Galilee. And, and if you've been a Christian for very long, you know that Jesus walked all over the Sea of Galilee. Okay. And uh, in fact, uh, I believe he called the disciples off of the boat when they were fishing on the Sea of Galilee. Um, but his father, Jonah's father, was uh, Amity. And uh, Jonah is listed as the fifth prophet, minor prophet of the Old Testament. Now, I've said this before, but just because we uh, the Bible describes him as a minor prophet doesn't mean his message was minor. Um, in fact, his message was salvation, you know, coming to God. And that is the number one message we all need to be, um, you know, putting out there. So it's not a minor thing. And, um, but it just means that uh, it was a short book. And there's only four chapters with 48 uh, scriptures or verses within that whole book. But it was power packed full of a, an amazing lesson and, and, and message out there. Okay. So his, his name does mean dove, but yet he was a very prideful man and not in a good way. He uh, was um, um, disobedient. He was stubborn. He was a complainer. And uh, the Bible says he never got over himself. And this is something that when I was in Sunday school, that wasn't taught. It was taught that um, Jonah was in the fish, and then he, 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 he got out of it, and he went and, and gave this message of God, and everybody was happy because the, the whole city accepted it. And that was where the story ended. Well, I was, when I read it for myself, I was like, hey, this guy never got over himself. Wait a minute, what, what happened to this part in the Sunday school lesson? Well, you know, I think that... Um, they, they weren't really focusing on that part. And so when I taught Sunday school to fourth and fifth graders, I told them about this and I was in detail with it and they learned. You know, I think that um, back in those days when I went to Sunday school, they just didn't figure that we could pick up on those things and, and they just didn't give kids enough credit. Well, when I taught Sunday school, I taught them those things and made it interesting and fun. And so, uh, but uh, the um, this is the thing, the people of Nineveh, um, were nasty, vile people, and Jonah didn't like them. In fact, he had a real prejudice issue. <laughs> he he hated the Assyrians. And um, um, when Jonah had received this call by God to go and, and minister to them, what, what he did is he was in Joppa, and instead of going this way, he took off in the opposite direction. He didn't want anything to do with these people. And he was on a boat to Tarshish. And we all know the situation where um, the, the seas came up and these you know, the people who are working on the boat start throwing stuff over to keep from sinking. And Jonah says, you don't have to do that. I'm the one, I'm the reason this is happening. And my God has, I've disobeyed my God. And they're like, you throw me over and this will be taken care of. And they're like, nah, you know, last resort. And But they finally did it. They, they even told him, your God is the true God. Because obviously they were, they were worshiping false gods. And so there was an example set to them right there. And as soon as they threw him over, God, you know, calling the seas. Well, that proved to the people on the boat that he was the true God. So, I mean, even, um, you know, in Jonah's death or supposed death, uh, you know, he, he was able to minister to those people. Well, we know that he didn't die. And um, so uh, um, on the way there, you know, <clears throat> okay, so he's in the fish. Um, and, you know, if you look at this map, it shows it was... Uh, about 2,500 miles in the opposite direction. And, and um, I put down about 2,200 miles, but you know, give or take a couple hundred miles, that's where he was headed. And, um, and this is because he hated the Assyrians so much. He just didn't believe that they should, um, you know, become followers of God. But you know, God just didn't let Jonah get off this easy. And so, <clears throat> um, 
So he, he ended up going there. But uh, let's stop and find out who these uh, Assyrians were. Why, why did he not like these people? Well, they, uh, um, they were inhabitants of an area that was uh, a very mighty empower dominating the most, most of the biblical Middle East. And so, um, and this happened from the 9th century to the 7th century. And um, they conquered areas comprised of what we know as now is Iraq, Syria, Jordan, and Lebanon. And you look, can see this map there of, of all this area that uh, they dominated over. In fact, they, they dominated and controlled the eastern shores of the Med Mediterranean Sea. And uh, the reason why God had uh, Jonah go to Nineveh is because it was the capital of the Assyrian um, area. And so um, this city was so large, according to Jonah chapter 3, verse 3, that it would take three days to get across it. And so, uh, um, and this is where the king was. And so that's why, you know, if you want to get anything done, you go where the king is, and then he sends a, de a decree out to the surrounding area. And so that's why God wanted him to go there. And so let's read uh, Jonah chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and preach to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah rose and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, a three-day journey in extent. And Jonah began to enter the city on the first day's walk. Then he cried out and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Well, this uh, this kind of freaked people out. So in the first verse, in, in, in the fifth verse, excuse me, they they believed. In the sixth verse, it says that the king believed, and in the seventh to the ninth verse, uh, the the king put out a decree that the, everybody was going to fast, even the beasts were going to fast and not, not drink any food or water, and they were going to stop their evil ways that God might not punish them. And, uh, and then in, the ver in verse 10, it explains that God does hold back his wrath and God doesn't punish them. Okay, now jump to the cha uh, chapter 4, the very last chapter of the book, and you find this dialogue that's going on between God and Jonah. Okay, all these people in Nineveh accept, accept the Lord, and Jonah's not happy about it because he just don't believe that they're worth saving. Okay. And uh, the Lord tried to, tried to reason with Jonah, and he just set pouting about the whole thing. In fact, when I read to the end, it never indicates that Jonah ever gets over it. And so um, what's the lesson learned here? When God asks you to do something, even though it's going to be hard, uh, you got to do it. It's in your best interest. And God puts us in these situations a lot, you know, to build us up, build our strength up, um, and, and get us prepared for the next uh, journey he's going to have us go through, you know. And so in the time I was in the military, uh, which was a long time, I mostly got a, were, were put with people that were just not uh, people I liked to be with. They were vile. They were angry. They, they hated everybody. And they were really tough to be around. And um, God allowed me to be around people like that in order to strengthen me for the next journey in life. And so when you're in those situations, just understand that your character is being built up, your spiritual man is being built up, and you're there for a reason. You're not always going to understand it, and you're not always going to like it, but it's in your best interest. So if you get anything out of the book of Jonah, just understand that God is, is doing a great work in you. You are not understanding it at the time, but try to understand it, try to soak it in, and I'm preaching to myself. So, <laughs> so I want to just say God bless you and have a great day, and we'll see you next time. Oh, Lord, please help me to testify for you When I know you've done so much for me Every time when I feel led I stand and sing I fail instead Oh Lord, please help me to understand you Oh 
Lord, please help me to understand you. 